here. I'm going to ask you all if you're comfortable doing it to move up a little bit closer. <laughs> um, you know, Melissa is excited to be here, but it'd be also more enjoyable to speak to you as opposed to have to look for you. So. That works. Mm -hmm. So a couple quick announcements for you. Uh, Saturday evening, tomorrow night, we have mass here at seven. And then Sunday evening, we have not worship here at seven, but we do have worship over in the Berlin Lounge as part of the Super Bowl weekend of celebration. We're gonna begin the evening before the game is on by worshiping together at six. Uh, with a short experience and then be ready for a kickoff and that kind of thing and pizza and, and just some good fellowship as we enjoy the evening together. So that's over in Berlin Lounge and there'll be, I think there's already notes on the doors as folks come looking for us. Monday's chapel speaker is Sarah Carlson. Uh, Sarah is from Trafford, Pennsylvania. And then uh, coming up next Friday is uh, Reverend Dr. Stephen McConnell. Steve is a member of our Board of Trustees. He's from uh, Church of the Palms in Sarasota, Florida. So we're excited to have Steve on campus along with the board and uh, have him speaking in chapel is always a, a great thing. <clears throat> Next Saturday, to just kind of give you a heads up of something that's coming down the road, Habitat for Humanity on Saturday evening, February 8th, is going to be um, doing a fundraiser that's a little different than most fundraisers on campus. They're going to provide, for people that order them, uh, toasted cheese sandwiches uh, beginning at 10 p.m. and go till 2 a.m. So. If folks want toasted cheese sandwiches, they call a assigned number and then that's transferred to the cooks who will be over in Berlin Lounge burn, no, making sandwiches. I was going to joke with them, burning sandwiches. Um, it's making toasted cheese so they can then deliver them to you. So it's even easier than that. They're going to deliver them right to your dorm. Uh, I'm not going to order any sandwiches until like 2 a.m. and then I'll have them bring them out to my house. <laughs> Brat. So Garrett, get ready. Brat. Yeah. So uh, it's good to good to be together. A um, couple of quick things down the road. So on Sunday, February 9th, we have B.J. Woodworth here, who will be speaking in chapel or in the chapel uh, at 7 p.m. And then uh, the Seekers Group is working on a 30-hour um, famine for February 21st. And then we have um, Christy lectures out there a long ways, so we're not going to get into that. Oh, we have Edmund Nelson on February 27th. Edmund is the uh, KDKA broadcaster. He does preseason color commentating for the Steelers and KDKA. So we're excited to have Edmund here um, on Thursday evening, the 27th. So a lot happening, a lot coming up, and uh, you're invited to participate in all of it. Let me uh, begin with prayer today. <clears throat> Lord, as we gather on a, on a wintry day, we give thanks to you for today. We give thanks for Melissa and her willingness to, to stand before us today and to share the message of your love. Uh, we're grateful that her pastor and her mom are able to be here today, and we ask that you would continue to be with them as they travel back home uh, later on. We pray now that as we gather that you would calm our hearts, slow us down a little bit so that we might hear the message of your word. We give thanks to you in your son's name. Amen. Yeah, scripture. Scripture reading text. Yes. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for home, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come to pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. Even though the song is called I Will Stand, I'm not going to make you stand. <laughs> so if you know this, sing along. If you don't, just listen. You saved me from my destruction.
The second reading is from Job chapter 11, verses 13 through 19. If you direct your heart rightly, you will stretch out your hands toward him. If iniquity is in your hand, put it away, and do not let wickedness reside in your tents. Surely then you will lift up your face without blemish. You will be secure, and you will not fear. You will forget your misery. You will remember it as waters that have passed away, and your life will be brighter than the noonday. Its darkness will be like the morning and you will have confidence because there is hope. You will be protected and take your rest in safety. You will lie down and no one will make you afraid. Many will entreat your favor. When I first saw the opportunity to sign up for a senior chapel service, I felt overwhelmingly compelled to do so. I had an urge to share my experience with faith that I had never had before. I realized not only did I want to tell my story, but I needed to. 
This was strange for me because I've always been a highly private person. This privacy included my relationship with God and the role I believe he plays in my life. But throughout my time at Westminster, I believe I've gained the strength and the confidence in myself to fully share how I've come to understand faith in my life and my place in the world. From as early as I could remember, I was contemplating what my life meant and what role religion played in it. Sometimes I was extremely optimi optimistic and overwhelmed with assurance, and other times I was extremely confused and not sure how I should feel about the world. I wondered if God had a plan for me, and I wondered if the plan would be something I would want. I wanted to know him, I just wasn't sure how. One of my earliest memories dates back to somewhere around four or five years old. It was Sunday and my mother had gotten my sister and me up early, something that was out of the norm for a weekend. We got up early on weekdays to go to preschool and the babysitters, but the weekends were for sleeping and having fun. I went to the bathroom where my mom was curling her hair and asked why we were up on a Sunday and where we were going. We're going to school, she said. School on th Sunday, I thought, that's weird. <laughs> But we went, almost every Sunday after that. In those weekly lessons, I was taught the classic Bible stories children were told. I learned about treating others how you want to be treated, and loving unconditionally, and how to be a good person. Eventually we began attending the church services before Sunday school. My family became members of the church, and I had my first Holy Communion, and eventually I became a confirmed member of the church. I learned a lot during those years, but also developed a lot of confusion as well. I heard wonderful stories, even some first-hand accounts of people's experiences with God. He had come to them, and he had spoken to them, and he had let them know that he heard their prayers. Why hadn't I encountered him yet? Why hadn't he come to me, I wondered. I had been doing everything right. I had gone through all the motions, yet I felt alone. In my late teenage years, I grew indifferent to faith. I was not interested as much and got wrapped up in the busy rush of high school activities. I wasn't sure if I was ever going to find God or have that majestic religious moment I've heard about so much in books and movies and even the people I'd come across in my life. After graduating high school, I was ready for the next phase in my life. I was nervous and scared for college, but I, would knew, but I knew it would be key in figuring out who I was and what I wanted in life. I was sure I would have my spectacular moment where God came to me and would assure me of my future. Before embarking on that journey, I had an opportunity that would have an impact on me for the rest of my life. The opportunity came in the form of a summer job. Through my church, I got the chance to work as a secretary at the regional office for all their Lutheran churches in Northwest Pennsylvania. This may seem mundane and impressive in matters in faith, but it helped me appreciate my religious upbringing and showed me a world of new ideas. I worked in an office with the bishop of the entire synod. He was a kind, simple man, yet he held so much weight, and watching him work made my faith in humanity stronger. I met wonderful, wonderful people from all over the state who showed me kindness and passed no judgment. I learned more about the Lutheran Church and the faith it fostered in me in the three, years, three summers I worked there than I had in my first 18 years of life. But repeatedly, I heard men and women, some clergy and some lay people, speak about the moments they had with God moments where they had felt his presence. Was I looking in the wrong place? Why hadn't I come across him yet? I was left to wonder this question many years, but I didn't know one thing for sure. I knew there was goodness in the world. I knew there was love, because I had experienced them both. There are things I've always held true, and still do to this day. Those things were enough for me when starting college. Once I got to Westminster, I was exposed to a myriad of views and opinions about faith. I suddenly felt I had to choose what stance I would adhere to. I felt confused, unsure, and unsettled in these situations. I tried not to think about religion from that point on because the uncertainty of it made me uneasy. I still searched, though. I kept this internal search a secret. I knew there was something greater than myself, though, but I just had to find it. Toward the end of my sophomore year, I was forced to think about God and religion more than I had been, as things in my life began to drastically change. I lost my grandmother much earlier than I should have, and I missed her every day since then. A few months after that, as trivial as, trivial as it may sound, I went through a very messy breakup with a long-term boyfriend, and it devastated me. The combination of these things left me feeling hopeless. I had hit my lowest low, and it was in the worst place I had ever been at the beginning of my junior year of college. My heart wasn't in any of the things I used to love. My major, working for the whole CAD, and even my positive view of the world. What followed after this period in my life, I consider a time of divine intervention. I began to self extensively self-reflect and take time to myself to really, truly be alone with my thoughts. Slowly but surely, I began to see the light. I began to heal with the help of people in my life that loved me. 
I found strength in myself that I never thought I had. I began to see the goodness in the world again, and with that goodness, I began to understand that there was something marvelous going on as well. In that goodness, I finally began to see God's grace. I finally began to understand that after all my years of searching, God had been with me all along. I was never alone like I thought I was. What I came to realize, what I understand today as well, is that maybe sometimes God comes to people in grand, spectacular ways, but other times his presence is more subtle, and he works in simple ways. I've come to understand that I am the second case. My whole life I've made choices and decisions, but God has guided me every step of the way. I had simply been missing it in my search for a grand moment. I began to see him in everything around me. I see him in everything good and right, pe everything good and right people do. I see him in the people I love. I see him in the world around me. I'm seeing him right now, and I always have. After I came to understand this, I began to feel more at peace with myself. I encountered a number of blessings in the months to come. I acquired an amazing internship. I found happiness in my schoolwork again, and I was named editor-in-chief editor of the newspaper here, something I had dreamed of very early on since my be the beginning of my college career. But as a senior, my future is very murky. I am nervous about where life will take me, but I know there is a plan for me. I know that if I continue to see God in the least expected places and understand his presence in my life, I will be guided to a purpose, a greater perhaps, just as I have been guided my whole life up until this point. And I can't wait to see what God has planned for me and what lies ahead for me this semester and the next year and the rest of my life to come. Before finishing up, I want to thank a few individuals who have been vital to my journey as a person and through faith. I want to first thank my parents for supporting and loving me in everything I do, even if they didn't understand. My two baby sisters for teaching me to laugh at myself and making the worst of the situations not so bad. My oldest and best friend, Trisha, for always being there for me, sometimes even without trying. My pastor, Samuel Bugu, who has taught me more about faith than anyone else I've ever known. The wonderful faculty at this college, particularly the English and Public Relations Department, for fostering my creativity, with a specific thanks to Mrs. Dolores Natal, who has been an anchor for me for this year, throughout this year. The entire Holcat staff, who helped me stay sane each and every week. Reverend Moore and the entire chapel staff for helping me plan this event and namely God, who has guided me through my worst moments and brought me the wonderful blessings I've experienced thus far. Instead of closing with a prayer, I've decided I would like to do it with a poem instead. Since I'm, I am an English major, I thought it would only be the right thing to do. I'm going to read a small section from one of the most important poems I think I've ever read, Walt Whitman's A Song of Myself. I first read it my freshman year in my Intro to American Lit class, and Whitman's words have stayed with me ever since. The, sec the small section I'm going to read from this very long poem um, has come to represent how I've grown to understand my faith and God's role in my life. You needn't have to look for him because, he's, because he has always been there. And I say to mankind, be not curious about God. For, who, for I who am curious about each am not curious about God. No array of terms can say how much I am at peace about God and about death. I hear and behold God in every object, yet understand God not in the least. Nor do I understand who there can be more wonderful than myself. Why should I wish to see God better than this day? I see something of God each hour of the 24, and each moment then. In the faces of men and women, I see God. In my own face in the glass, I see God. I find letters from God dropped in the street, and every one of them is signed by God's name. I leave them where they are, though. For I know that wheresoever I go, others will punctually come forever and ever. Thank you. All right. I hope the words um, will reflect to you what Melissa just shared.
of my soul you are there you're the anchor that will hold you are there in the valley of the shadows you are season of my soul you are there you're the anchor that will hold you are there in the valley of the shadows you are faithful God and I will sing to the maker of heaven Thank you. Melissa, well, that was great. The music uh, fit perfectly with what you were talking about today. I don't know if you picked that or not, but what a great song. Yeah. Um, the journey of life is one that's filled with um, ups and downs, as you know, and times when we think we're in control of everything and we do our own thing, and then suddenly God comes along and reminds us that God is present and faithful. And so you were able to share that story with us, which is a reminder to each of us that the presence of the Lord is always there for us, even when we can't seem to recognize that God is there. And so I, I thank you for that. As I often do when we have pastors who are present, uh, I want to invite Pastor Samuel to come forward. Uh, he is the pastor of the Mount Zion Lutheran Church up in Tyanesta, and he's uh, from Zimbabwe. Is that right? And uh, he's uh, a wonderful pastor, and as you heard, a wonderful friend of Melissa and her family. So, Pastor? I want to thank Melissa. Uh, this was wonderful, and uh, it's made me proud of, uh, of her, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, please join me in our prayer, and uh, if it's okay, we can stand and uh, pray together. Mighty Father, Heavenly God, we thank you today that you have given us your word through your beloved daughter, Melissa. We thank you, Father, for being there with her and for her, and uh, as she traveled all the journey from birth to today, Father, We've seen your presence and uh, we thank you for that. And we want you, Father, to brighten her future and bless her. And as we come together, bless us too. And now, Father, may the love, the grace, and the peace that comes from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.